everyone, and welcome to Napton Music Notes Ukulele Circle. Unfortunately, we can't gather together, but, you know, we're doing the safe and smart thing, and as you can see, Santa's being safe as well. Um, so, um, today we're going to talk about ukuleles. Yes, 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 yes. And how to play them and how to have fun. Um... So, 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 <laughs> oh, it's a joyful time of year, isn't it? Santa's having trouble breathing. There we go. That's much better. My beard gets in, in the way sometimes, kids. Sorry about that. So anyways, um, yeah, let's talk about uh, the ukulele quick. How many yeah. strings does it have? One, two, three, four. And from top to bottom, how are they tuned? G. I hope he's good or he won't get any presents this year. Hmm, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we should talk about how you make certain chords on the ukulele. Because, you know, we can play, uh, what, jingle bells? Right. Oh, come on, you do it. <laughs> So there's two ways to play stuff on the ukulele. <laughs> you can play single notes like Santa did. No, so. Santa did not. <laughs> well, Santa tried, and that's what matters. Um, or you can play chords, which is a combination of notes. I think Santa's got it. Nice. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> or you can play chords that are a combination of notes. Uh, more often than not, you have a shape that your fingers will go in, and then you strum across all four strings. <laughs> so, it's all about knowing where to put those fingers on the particular strings in a particular spot. And doing that, then you can make those chord shapes. So, um, for instance, um, yeah, go ahead, Elfie. <laughs> I'm the reindeer, though. The reindeer herder. <laughs> okay. So what Robin has drawn up here are what we call chord charts, and they represent looking at the ukulele as if it was this direction. And you can see the line she's drawing across are these fret bars, and the spaces in between are called the frets. So where we put a finger to make a particular chord, there's fret number one starting up here, two, three, four, yes, 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 pretty good. And there's our tuning, good, Charlie eats apricots, oh, I mean apples. <laughs> And then we draw a little circle to indicating where you to put a finger should be. So if I was to put my finger right there and press down on that string. Third space on the A string. On the A string at the third fret, I'm making a C chord. Now most songs don't just have one chord in them, do they, Robin? No, that's right. Oh. There's very, very few, if any, songs that have one chord. There's lots of songs that have two chords, and there's lots of songs that have three or four chords. In fact, that's the majority of songs have at least three or four. And then it's all about switching between those chords. usually recommendations on which finger is going to be more efficient. However, if you play a C chord with your first finger, 
<laughs> if I could do this whole better. Yep. Or with your second finger. Is that the same chord, Santa? Why, yes it is! It sounds exactly the same to me! Exactly. So, honestly, it really doesn't matter. Well, that's probably the least that's efficient way to do that. <laughs> Uh, but it still is a C chord because it's all about which notes you're hitting. When you press down in that third space, you're changing that string to that note. And then you're hitting all the open notes with it. Which finger you use is more dependent on which chord you're moving to or which chord you're coming from before or after the C. In this case, it is usually more common, like Santa's playing here, to use your third finger for the C, because when you go to F, your first and your second finger are already free. Makes for a smooth and efficient transition. Ooh, big words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uses three fingers. However, there is an alternate way to do it. The traditional way will use your first finger right here on the second space of the C string, the second finger on the second space of the A string, and the third finger on the third space of the E string. Making a little triangle shape with all three fingers like that. And the alternative is to put one finger flat across the bottom three strings and then one finger in that, on that E string in the third space. Hmm. Now one little handy tip for all of you is how we place those fingers on there. So when I play, I play on my fingertip. I can play on the flat part of my finger, this is true, but now if I did that with the F chord, you notice I have to get my fingers curled up like that, so that I'm not interfering with the other strings here and here, which are played open. So if I do it properly, it sounds like that. If I'm folded over a little bit, we don't like, Santa doesn't like that sound. So then it's just a matter of learning how to switch from one chord to the other nice and efficient. And you can do that, you can play a song together. And we are prepared to play and perform and sing, I guess, some, <laughs> some holiday ditties for you. <laughs> so as certainly you know that if you have any questions, um, you should be able to comment, and we will certainly be relayed from our wonderful um, uh, audio-visual uh, director and interpreter <laughs> across the way over there, who will relay those questions to us, which we will do our best to answer. So, um, there you go. There we go. <laughs> so, we're going to be starting off with Up on the House Top. Now, there should be versions available, digital versions available for you guys to download. Um, where are those located? They are actually located right on the main page. Okay. So, there is a, a photo with all the songs playing, so they can click on each photo for to view. Perfect. Now, you know, Santa's really old, so he's not very good with tech. Technology. <laughs> he has special elves that help him with technology. So, yeah, uh, you know, if you can't figure it out yourself, certainly find a teenager and they'll tell you what to do. <laughs> okay. So, when Santa begins his run on...
Christmas Eve, he always goes up on the housetop, which is the first song we're going to do. Do you know this one? I do. I do, I do. Well, yes. Okay, so I guess we're going to try and play it together, right? That's right. And it starts on the C chord, to the F chord, to the G chord, and basically repeats uh, somewhat within the pattern. It does. Yes. On the music, you will see um, the chord symbol, or the chord name, up above the lyrics, and then next to that chord, you'll have a number in little parentheses. Um, so that is the number of counts or beats that that chord is played for. Now you can strum just once per count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or if you want to get a little fancy, you can add in some upstrokes. As long as you have that steady beat for a count of eight for that first C chord, and then F has four, and then G has four, and so on. Okay. Good. All right. Are you ready to go, Susan? Yes, I think I'll just say one more thing. Is it like if you are just new to the ukulele, you certainly can play it nice and slow. We might be playing it with a little bit of pace, like we might be used to hearing this song, but you certainly can play it very slow so that you're consistent with those changes mm -hmm. at the right time in accordance with where they fall above the words, okay? Yes. And if you're brand new and trying to play along with us and we're going a little too fast, you can always start off just strumming each chord one time and then take the time that would be played to get to your next chord. Well, let's go up on the house top. Let's. Santa's not good at counting either. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. You've got to be really good at counting when you're working with the reindeer. <laughs> Put one of those good off, would you? <laughs> Alrighty then. Alright, so... reverse triangle. So your G triangle you have right here. Now your G7 triangle has the point going the other way. So you have the first fret of the E string instead of the third fret. So you gotta kind of move your fingers around a little bit. But um, that chord chart is right on the music. And again, if you're not comfortable trying the G7, you can play the G. If you don't like the G, you can always play the G7, and it'll just give it a little bit more of a jazzy feeling. And then our A minor is a very easy one. It's a one finger chord with your first or second finger on the second fret. I like to use my second finger because when I'm coming from the F chord, 
my second finger is already there. So all I have to do is take my first finger off and boom, there's my A minor. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Santa? It's just Santa. Oh, okay. <laughs> I suppose it's Mr. I am married to Mrs. Santa. Yes. So. And if I'm the reindeer wrangler, and technically you are my boss, so... <laughs> Always remember that. <laughs> but we work as a team. Yes, we're like family at that Santa can't do things alone, just like all of us out there can't do things alone. We all need to ask for help every now and then, and that's okay. Exactly. <laughs> all right, Rudolph. <laughs> Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. All right, up here counting again. That yeah, sounds good. Okay. One, two. <laughs> then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa I came, came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you drive my sleigh tonight? But then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll down in his Santa when it comes to performing. No matter what happens, keep going. Exactly. <laughs> if your hat flies off, keep playing. Or just don't wear a hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rudolph's a good kid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and his nose really does glow. It does. I remember a young man who told me he'd go out every Christmas Eve and look up in the sky, and quite often he'd see that blinking red light moving across. Hmm. So maybe on Christmas Eve, if you have the chance, go outside. But then make sure you go right to bed. <laughs> yes. So that you're ready for Santa to come and do his Santa stuff. Hmm. Still no questions, huh, kids? No questions yet. Okay. <laughs> or adults, you know, I, I would assume so. Although, although Santa does have an interesting accent today. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody comment on that? Yeah, I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Little. Oh. is the one holiday that really has more songs than anything else. There's just a few Halloween songs, just a few Easter songs. There's very few Thanksgiving songs. Yes, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess that means it's pretty important. Of course, what would Christmas be without Santa? <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, we started off on the housetop 
with me and Rudolph. And then I went down the chimney and started doing something. You know what I was doing? Um, Besides my ever-changing accent. <laughs> eating cookies. Eating cookies. Eating cookies. Oh, cookies. Leaving presents under the tree. Leaving presents. Stuffing stockings. Stuffing the sock stockings. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta do that. Yep. Leaving a lot of candy canes and stuff. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um. But what else? Well, you know, I take a little time to do some rocking around the Christmas tree. <laughs> uh. Uh, so rocking around the Christmas tree is our next one. And this one has a few more chords to it. So, of course, take your time to really um, get familiar with those chords if you're not already. Um, and you can always, like I said, just play each chord one time. Just practice getting your fingers from one chord to the next, to the next. Now this song actually starts off with just two chords back and forth. C, G7, G7, C, C, G7, G7, C. From there though it throws in the F and the E minor, which is a new one. Um, a minor and D, which is another new one. And then it goes back to your C, G7, G7, C. Um, so E minor, let's talk about that. About what? About E minor. <laughs> e minor! All right. <laughs> so I like to think of E minor as kind of like a staircase, like the steps on a staircase. So starting on the second space on your A string, you're going to step up a fret and up a string with your next finger, and then up a fret and up a string with your next finger. So second fret. 3rd fret E, 4th fret C, and you strum all 4 strings. And which chord is that? That is the E minor. Okay. Now the next one is the D. Now this one is another one where there's a few different ways to play it. And honestly with a lot of these chords there are a few different ways to play them. We're just trying to give the most efficient and easiest ones to start off with. So D um, looks kind of like that. You got three fingers all in a row on the same fret on three separate strings. So I have my first finger on the second fret of the G, second finger on the second fret of the C, and my third finger on the second fret of the E. And then the A is open. So you want to make sure to really curve your fingers so that you get that open string. <clears throat> However, Santa has problems with this chord. <laughs> because Santa has such big hands that you can hear I'm not making it very clear. So what Santa does, he actually flips around his thumb quick and presses down on all top three strings. Now, the only problem with doing that is then when you got to come back to a different chord, you got to be a little bit quicker to get there. But practice and you can get there. So, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. If not, close enough. <laughs> if not, it makes progress. <laughs> oh, very wise there, reindeer her. <laughs> Did you learn that from Blitzen? Oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very wise. <laughs> He's the smart one. Yeah. yeah. So should we should we do what I do? Rock around the Christmas tree? Let's rock. Let's rock.
you wanted to keep going with that one, you could go back up to where the F chord came in. Uh, you will get a sentimental feeling. And then repeat that last part again. Oh, yeah. Good information. Very good, very good. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, um, here at the North Pole, I mean, at the North Pole, we're here at Napton. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> I always feel like I'm at home wherever I am. That's sent. So, um, at, at, at the North Pole, we have a special elf who digs down into the ground to um, get out, um, you know, those alphabet blocks for young children? They have the letters of the alphabet on them. Those grow in the ground. You wouldn't have, yeah, you, they have to dig them out. They mine them. Oh, okay. And we have one special elf that goes down and just gets the E's. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the E miner. <laughs> <laughs> No questions. Conundrums or queries. Queries or <laughs> complaints. No, no complaints. <laughs> just, <laughs> just compliments. Santa doesn't like complaints. <laughs> Go to the front desk. <laughs> so, after all is said and done, on Christmas Eve, mm -hmm. we move to that special time of Christmas. The silent night. Which is a, again a very standard, um, classic um, Christmas song. That it is. It is. It is. It is. Um, so again, this one can be played very simply. Correct. It can. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Silent Night is a very slow one, so you can really, you know, take advantage of that and take your time. Um, it uses just C, F, and G. So the first three that we started with, and um, this one would be counted in what's known as three, four times. So instead of counting one, two, three, four, or eights, we have threes, sixes, or twelves because it's multiples of three. Um, so silent night. <laughs> Some, nice. Somehow I, I got there. You did it. Well, the other option is going way down here. Silent night. Which works. No, oh, that's very tough for <laughs> But you can see how it has a slightly different feeling to it. Oh, it's cold. Oh, that's really low. <laughs> but then when the P. So now we should try to be more like together. Yes. Okay. One, two, seven, nine, right? Isn't that how you counted that? Exactly. That's why children get so many toys, because Santa can't count. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll just throw a whole bunch under there. He loses track. It's okay. Whatever. <laughs> That's why he keeps lists. Oh, yeah. And I checked them twice. Exactly. <laughs> Naughty or nice? I tried to be I'll nice. check my list on you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ready? I believe so. One, two, three. Silent night, holy night, all is calm.
I've heard of this song. Yes, so you can repeat the same chords for all the different verses with all the different lyrics. You just change the words. Now, again, this being a quiet little song, mm -hmm. I believe the fancy word is contemplative. <laughs> contemplative. Um, there are options. So, of course, we're doing just strum. Nice, consistent strumming. What you could do is you could arpeggiate. Oh, 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 that just got another big word. <laughs> Arpeggiation. Yes, which what? simply means to break up the notes from a chord. In other words, you're just individually picking those. But again, we're still in a rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. And as long as you're holding that chord, you can pick whatever <laughs> pattern that you think sounds good. So I like to just go... Do it the same, does he? <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> that's not how it works because we're just playing the same chord. We're playing different notes from the same chord at different times. But again, definitely changes the feeling of the song as opposed to the constant strumming. And if you have a ukulele buddy playing along with you, one of you guys can play the chords and another one of you can play the picking and do the arpeggiation. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did I say he could count. That's right. And counting. Sounded very lovely, though. I put numbers on the reindeer so I can tell. <laughs> One, two, they're all here. And when I get to nine, I know I'm there. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's usually eight, but since Rudolph joined the team, it's yes. Now it's nine. Number nine, number nine, number nine. He's a good guy. I believe the Beatles talk, sang a song about number nine. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yes, true. they did. <laughs> so, again, you will find that quite a few of your standard Christmas songs, um, Away in a Manger, Little Town of Bethlehem, a lot of them are really just three chord songs. Mm -hmm. And we certainly do have, uh, well, not we, but but Napton Music here has wonderful books that can help you along with that process. And uh, just like you'll find in the links here uh, to what's been written up, um, you will be able to follow along with those chords, um, along with the words, uh, changing those chords at the right time. Okay. Yes. Hmm. So, how are we doing? Oh, we've got plenty of time yet. So, <coughs> should we really move on to the next song already? We're way ahead of schedule. Well, how about we do this song and then we have the people watching comment their favorite song oh. and we'll go with, we'll do that one again. So, what is this song? Auld Lang Syne. Now this song is a Scottish song originally, um, but it is very commonly played around New Year's Eve. And a song about, um, you know, for old time's sake is what Auld Lang Syne means. So, um, you know, lose my train of thought. Take it away, Santa. Uh, <laughs> Auld is old, right? <laughs> <laughs> Should all the acquaintance Should. be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all the acquaintance be forgot and the days of old lang syne? For old time's sake. For old time's sake, my dear, for old time's sake, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old time's sake. Hmm. Very good. You learned something today. That's right. And there are other verses as well, so you can keep playing the same chords. Um, the other verses, though, are a little bit harder to uh, understand, as they are um, very Celtic. 
So it'd be kind of cool to look up a, like a lyric video and check it out if you're interested. It's a good song. Speaking of old, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> really old. Oh. Yeah. At least going back to what? The fourth century, there's a report from Santa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe from ancient Turkey. Oh. This is true. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what was ancient Turkey like, Santa? Um, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> So anyways, we should try to ha sing this song for old time's sake. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one, uh, on the chord chart, you will see um, three chords. We got uh, G, D7, and C. So D7 is another one of those ones. Any time you have a chord, that would be like... G and G7 or D and D7, you can kind of swap them out. It will just give the song a slightly different feeling. So you can play your sum over D if that's more comfortable for you than trying to maneuver that D7 shape. But here's the D7 the way that I play it. With my first and my second finger, just skipping over the C string there, both on the second fret on the G and the E. But you can also just play your regular D and it'll work. Santa can't see. <laughs> there you go. Well, doesn't Santa normally wear like glasses, reading glasses? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> when he's looking at his list and checking it twice, make sure you can see everything correctly. I think Santa's going to skip the glasses today. <laughs> <laughs> chords start after the first word. So we will sing the first word first and then start strumming on the second word. So we sing should and then start on all. Go ahead. <laughs> you want Santa to start? Yes. Should all the quaintness be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all the quaintness be forgot and days of all lang syne? For all of lang syne, my dear, for all Santa forgot. Yes. Even though I know every language in the world. <laughs> old acquaintance be forgot, Santa? Santa's old. <laughs> Forgetfulness is a symptom of old age. <laughs> and this, of course, is the uh, final song in Santa's favorite Christmas movie. It's a Wonderful Life. Ah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, is, is, it's a Christmas movie, but it's not really Christmas about. It's more about, you know, being kind to everybody and cherishing life. Exactly. Yeah. Which is a good thing. And, you know, we all have a lot to be thankful for in 2020. That we do. You know, um, it's, I think it's brought us together closer as families. Mm -hmm. So... Be, be grateful for everything that is. Do we have any comments as to which was the favorite performed song today? There are no favorites. Oh. oh. Maybe there's too many people out shoveling today. <laughs> that could be it. That could be it. I think something's flying here. Yeah, you're... Is that a reindeer? 
What is that, Santa? Well, we'll, we'll get to that. You just relax. <laughs> or should, should we get to the bag or go to the... Let's, let's, let's go to the bag. bag. Let's yeah. do Santa's bag. Santa? <laughs> Actually, you know, Santa, um, besides the elves, Santa does a lot of shopping. But he does. He does. He does. And, you know, I love to shop at Napton Music. They've got those good things. You know, actually, I couldn't resist the jingle bells. <laughs> So those are available here. And since we're talking about ukulele today, there's all kinds of goodies in Santa's bag that he's got for good girls and boys. Why, there's a ukulele capo. What does a capo do? A capo is something that you would put over the strings on the fret on your ukulele to change the key of your instrument. Hmm. So by doing so, you can play your same chord shapes like your C and your G and your F and play them in different keys. Whoop! Santa doesn't need keys. <laughs> he goes down the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> so here I'm gonna go ahead and put this capo across the second fret. I'm gonna try to keep it straight and close to the metal fret bar there. Now you can hear all those uh, strings are different notes. And if you play C, you're going to count three frets up from where that capo is. Now it's not actually a C chord now, but you're playing the C chord shape. Now this is a D chord. Oh, I was going to show, put that back on there. Okay, okay. Let's listen to Santa. So I'm going to play Silent Night, Holy Night. Now you play. Silent Night, Holy Night. So you can see that changes where you sing. Remember earlier, Santa was struggling to get certain notes when he sang. Yeah. The capo can be a great assistant in helping with with uh, finding a comfortable single well, Let's see what else is in here. Um, ooh, what is in here? Well, if you want to stand up and play, you need a ukulele strap. Ooh, very nice. And this one, uh, well, that would match yours very well, wouldn't it? It would, yes. Ooh. Really, really nice. And this is just one of the many styles here. Um, relatively new one. He's got kind of a tribal-y, there's a turtle there, and a lizard, and uh, really light-colored leather ends. Beautiful strap. Mmm, fine quality. No else made that. <laughs> made in USA. Oh, very nice. So, of course, I talked earlier about music that was oh, available. Here's just one example that I got, which was the Kids Ukulele Course Christmas Songbook. Bunch of baby hits in here. Oh, if I could read without my glasses. Deck the Halls, Go Tell It on the Mountain, Hark the Herald Angels, Jingle Bells, Joy to the World, Oh Come All Ye Faithful, Silent Night, and We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and more. <laughs> wow. Excellent. Of course, Jingle Bells yeah. wasn't really written as a Christmas song, was it? That's right. Oh, why don't you tell us about that? I think we talked about it a little bit last month because we oh, played yeah. it last month. This but is true. Oh, for, those of us, for those of you that weren't present for our Thanksgiving live stream, um, the song Jingle Bells, while it is a popular Christmas song, was actually originally written for Thanksgiving. Hmm. And it was the the person who wrote it, I forgot his name, um, wrote it for his church's Thanksgiving service. And if you listen to the song, there's really no mention of Christmas specifically. It's riding in a sleigh in the snow. Mm -hmm. So it became so popular with his church that they requested it back for the next month for the Christmas service. And then that's how it kind of became synonymous with Christmas. 
Not a lot of people ride in sleighs these days. That's true. Yeah. Although I have. It's very fun. Oh, yes. I have as well. <laughs> <laughs> Every year. Oh, at least once or twice. <laughs> and you know, Santa found out there, they have these wonderful packages as well for the ukuleles. So, what's all in, what's all in here? Oh, Lots of things. You, get, you get the ukulele, you get a gig bag, which is a thing to carry it in. Big Santa's gig bags over here. Um, you get a tuner. You get some picks. And you get some stickers. Oh, everybody loves stickers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you get a free video by some guy. The free video ebook download, yeah, and yeah. we're also including a DVD with these. Oh, yes. And the package comes in three colors. So, again, a very good, really good one for anybody who's just looking to start out. What else is in here? Oh, you know what Santa does after Christmas? What do you do after Christmas, Santa? Well, first off, I had to take a really long nap. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be exhausting. Well, no, I have to, I have to load up on carbohydrates. Oh, yeah. And then, then a very long nap. But then I go to the islands. <laughs> <laughs> With my ukulele. When, and, and my friend, Jumpin' Jim. Ah, yes. Oh, you know him? He's yeah. a good guy. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we sit around and play, uh, play ukulele songs. So, again, another book. Available in the store. There's a lot of great books for ukulele um, in the store. Um, certainly, also, the store gives private lessons. That's so right. So, if you ever want to do that, we can do that. Um, these days at Napton, how are lessons done? Are they virtual or are they in person? How do they do that? We're offering both. Oh. We're offering both. So, um, I'd say it's about probably. 50 50. Mm -hmm. um, but for virtual lessons, we have a few different virtual platforms that we are able to do. Um, and, you know, if you are interested in getting set up for that, just give us a call and we can help you work through that. Um, for in person lessons, how do you stay safe? We stay safe by wearing a mask for the whole lesson. The teacher wears a mask and a face shield. Um, we social distance within the studio and wash your hands before and after the lesson, and the teacher disinfects the room in between each lesson as well. You know, it was a trick question because Santa's always watching. I actually know you've been doing that. Of so course, of course. It, it was, it's good. But it's good to know. It's good to, to know. So what, there's one last thing in Santa's bag, and it is, these are brand new in the store. I've never seen them here before, and I was so excited. Yeah. Because um, there are many ukulele players out there who have ukuleles already, and it's like, well, you can't, well, you could buy them another ukulele for Christmas, because, you That's know, true. if one is good and Santa doesn't count, two or seven must be better. Yes. <laughs> but, also, this is a fine little ukulele stand. So, in other words, you can put your, actually, here's, one, this is a guitar stand, but very similar um, to the ukulele stand. It's just a little smaller, so it's built for your ukulele. Yeah. And it'll always be right there, ready to play. So, you know, when you, when you, if you happen to get up in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve, and you have a ukulele sitting around, don't be surprised if you hear Santa playing a few songs while he's rocking around the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of good gift ideas here at the store. Santa's certainly taking advantage, swiping his card and paying cash for the other half. <laughs> yes. Santa doesn't do checks. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't have any more questions or comments, Queries. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Should we play, replay one of them. We should replay one song to send you off on your merry way. <laughs> all right. What do you think, Santa? Oh, Santa loves all songs. Mm. Shall we rock around the Christmas tree? One oh, I suppose we should. <laughs> Santa can't find it. There it is. <laughs> Oh. 
Space to be, yes. <laughs> so, anyway, seriously, Merry Christmas to all of our friends out there. I'm glad you tuned in. Yep. Certainly check in with us again uh, back in January for the foreseeable future until things change. Obviously, we're going to be doing virtual live streaming, mm -hmm. um, but obviously, hopefully, in 2021, we will finally be able to once again gather in person to do these uke circles. So, yeah, I mean, you know, once it warms up, maybe we can do another outdoor one. Right. And there's that as well. Who knows? Maybe it'll be 65 degrees in January. Uh, it's happened. It has happened. <laughs> so, but seriously, all everybody have a good, happy holiday, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or any of the other holidays. Certainly enjoy the holidays. And, um, and, and certainly we are always happy to help with any music questions here at Napton Music Notes. If you have any specific um, songs you would like to see us do in one of these youth circles, let us know. We can definitely look into it. Yeah. We'd love to help. All right. I got to get going. Yep, you got to feed man. those reindeer. Yep. There's only 13 days left and I have so much to do. Yes, got to make sure everything's prepared. So... <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.